Each of these deaths was so dramatic. I mean, it was like for 10 years I lived, you know, with the weight of, of so much drama and decline and pain and loss and uh, just depletion and exhaustion. And each one, and, you know, one would <laughs> die and then another would get sick. And it, it was very compelling to... Uh, to write about it or use material letters and so forth to uh, to preserve those events because I think I sort of knew. I mean, they never seem like they'd end, but they have ended, and... And the memories have, have faded, are fading, and uh, I couldn't do it now, emotionally. It, 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 it worked because everything was current when I did it. It's kind of an inspirational story. I mean, I know a lot of addicts and alcoholics and people who who think their lives are over and think that um, you know they won't be an act two in their life and that they've just burned out and and I as an example of somebody who who has lived had a second life and a second chance and and had a been very happy doing what I've done and uh, when I didn't expect it. Well, well, remote, of course, but I had a great time. I, I, I really, I, I have only a few regrets. I'm happy I had that time. I mean, I it was fun to be wild and carefree and sort of pre-AIDS, you know, no jeopardy. You could kind of do anything you wanted. And those were the days, my friends, we thought they'd never end. And uh, I, I, it's as though I were two people. I mean, people, well, of course, now I'm older, so, you know, and weigh twice as much as I did then. And have white hair and, uh, you know, people who hear my story almost can't believe it. Like, you did that and you were sitting in jail in Hampstead Jail and uh, can't imagine it. And I almost can't, but, uh, but, you know, it's still vivid. I have a lot of uh, euphoric recall about those days, even though a lot of it isn't really true. It, 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 to me, in the, you know, in the arc of my life, uh, the suffering, the most suffering that I felt I've done is after I stopped drinking, when I had no sedation. Even when the worst things were happening and I was having seizures or you know, almost losing my child. Uh, it was, you know, I was sedated. I was kind of not, not affected and didn't really feel pain. But when I, when I let go of the sedative and had to live life without a sedative, that was hard. Everything was really hard. It took years to, to sort of grow another skin and um, feel comfortable in the world without alcohol. I think that's too simplistic because I see, you know, my recovery and other recoveries, uh, it almost doesn't matter what you do. If you're going to maintain a sober life. I mean, you have certain disciplines that you have to do. And I mean, I use a support group to help me 
uh, with it. And I, I'm vigilant about uh, keeping the memory green and not letting my euphoric recall get out of hand. Well, I, I hope a reader will cry, will laugh, will read it in two sittings, and uh, feel uh, kind of warmed by the story.